Now let's look at Genesis chapter 2 verse 9. Genesis chapter 2 verse 9. Out of the ground the Lord God caused to grow every tree that is pleasing to the sight and good for food. Pleasing to the sight. That is beautiful creation, beautiful plant. When you see it, you admire it, you desire because it's beautiful. But not just for beauty, but also for food. Good for food. The tree of life also. The tree of life also. There was a tree called the tree of life. In the midst of the garden. And the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Please remember this. That when we read in Hebrews chapter 1 and the verse 1. The Bible said God spoke to our fathers or to the fathers in many portions and in many ways. And we said one of the ways God spoke was through visions using symbols to communicate his message. Now in this very uh, 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 passage we are reading, it was written by Moses. However, Moses was not there in the beginning. So how did Moses get this? It came to Moses by vision. Moses saw. And things were used to communicate the message of God to Moses. So Moses, in his vision, saw that there was a tree of life and there was a tree called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the garden. So there was a garden. There was a tree of life. There was a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. However, God made the ground or the earth to bring forth plants or trees that was pleasing to the side, desirous. I mean, the trees you see and they were beautiful, beautiful trees and they were also good. But he mentions the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The tree of life is a symbolic tree or is it's representing a specific something. Amen. The tree of life is a symbol. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil too is a symbol. Take note of these two trees because you see how we go on with them or with the trees. Amen. So he made the ground to bring forth those pleasing trees and good for food. Now let's go to verse 15 of Genesis 2. Then the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to cultivate it and keep it. The Lord God commanded the man saying, From any tree of the garden you may eat freely. So here, there is God commanding man. Any tree at all, you may what? Eat freely. Eat freely. Freely. I mean, freely. Any. Verse 17. But. Any time you see but, you know that something different is coming. They say, but from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat from it, you will surely die. He said, eat of any tree at all. You may want to eat freely. No limitation. Out of the creation of God, there was one tree. All the plants, all the trees God made. Only one tree God asked man not to eat. And that was this also is a symbolic, and we will look at what it is. Don't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That's what God told man. That's what God told man. Amen. Now look at something in Genesis 3, 1. This time we are going to read a long passage. Genesis 3, 1. Genesis 3, 1. Now, the serpent was more crafty than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Indeed, has God said you shall not eat from any tree of the garden? There's a serpent. The woman said to the serpent, 
from the tree of the from the fruit of the trees of the garden we may eat but from the fruit of the tree which is in the middle of the garden god has said you shall not eat from it or touch it or you will die did you see where god said you shouldn't touch it god only said do not eat but now she said that we should not even touch it okay verse 4 the serpent said to the woman, You surely will not die. For God knows that in the day you eat from it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was desirable to make one wise, she took from its fruit and ate and she gave also to her husband with her, and he ate. The tree was good for food, that's what the woman saw. The tree was also good because it will open their eyes. And the tree was a tree of delight. Okay, let's move on. Remember, at this time, the two of them have eating it the tree god asked them not to eat or the fruit then the eyes of both of them were open and they knew that they were naked and they sealed fig leaves together and made themselves loin coverings the first time man thought of covering his nakedness the first time man tried to hide his nakedness is when man walked out of the coverings of God. The first time man thought he was naked was when man lost the covering of God, the glory of God. When man walked out of the plan of God, man started to create for himself a way to cover his nakedness. Any man without God is a naked person. Anyone without God is a naked person. And I'm not talking about walking with your things showing. You are wearing cloth. You are wearing beautiful jewels. You are wearing gold. You are wearing whatever, but you are naked. When you walk out of God. So there are naked men walking, naked women walking, but they are beautiful and they're wearing beautiful clothes, shirts, designers of fashion, whatever, yet they are naked. And made themselves loin coverings. They made it. God didn't give them anything like that. There was a supernatural covering. There was the glory of God on them. That they could not see, even themselves, they could not see that they were naked. <laughs> but when they walked out, they knew that the coverings they had was from God. From the verse 8, they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord God called to the man. And said to him, where are you? My question to you out there is, where are you? Where are you? Are you in the presence of God or you are outside? Are you with God or you are outside? Where are you? God is asking, where are you? Are you where he kept you, designed for you, or you have walked out of the presence of God? Where are you? 